Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello friends, so far in this lecture you have seen about spring mass damper system, equation of motion, longitudinal mode, sugoid mode, lateral directional mode, different modes, spiral, roll, Dutch roll mode and introduction to SAS, stability augmentation system. Today we will be focusing on transfer function. As you know transfer function is given by the Laplace transform of output to Laplace transform of input and assuming that all the initial conditions are zero or you can say that the system was in equilibrium. We will be seeing what will be the response of a system if it is exposed to a different input signal. We will be dealing in this course with major two signals that is uh, impulse and a unit step signal. Now impulse signal. Mathematically it is defined as it is very large at t equals to 0, second it is very small for t greater than 0 and third integral is 1. These are the basic property of an impulse signal. Now the shape of the signal does not matter. It can be either a rectangular shape or triangular shape, but it must satisfy this following conditions. Now, practically a signal with a very large magnitude uh, it is practically impossible. So, we assume that a signal for a short duration which is having an area of unit or you can say integral in one. So, assuming this is a step signal, your duration will be zeta and its amplitude is 1 by zeta. So, overall area is 1 or in case of this signal my amplitude will be 2 zeta and my duration will be 1 zeta. See area is half into 2 zeta into z zeta zeta which will be uh, we have seen about impulse signal, so we will be seeing about unit step signal. Now where this impulse signal is, physically you can see this impulse signal during some collision or when an object hits, for example, when you hit a nail with a hammer, the force is known as an impulse. Even for spring mass system, if you apply force for very short duration, the response of that system will be due to impulse, that response is called as impulse response. Now, the second signal is unit step signal. As the name suggests, unit step means it will have magnitude equal to 1 for t greater than equal to 0 and magnitude is 0 for t less than 0. That means, a signal exists for time which is greater than 0. 
that is if we if I draw this signal it will be a constant magnitude signal for t greater than 0 and it will be same magnitude at t equals to 0 also. Since unit is mentioned in this unit step signal, so my magnitude will be 1. If unit step or in general if you call it a step signal, the general definition is it will have a constant magnitude for t greater than equal to 0. Now we will be seeing how the system responds when this input signal are given to its transfer function. So best will be we will be taking a numerical and that will explain how the system will respond when it is exposed to unit step signal. Okay. So let us consider the case of pure rolling motion. The differential equation given for pure rolling motion is pure rolling motion. minus d L by d delta A into delta A plus d L upon d P into delta of P equals to I x delta of phi double dot. Now further solving this differential equation we will get minus of 1 by L p into delta p dot plus delta p equals to minus L delta A delta of delta A divided by L p. Now these equations has already been solved in previous lecture, so I am not solving step by step solution of this equation. We will get this uh, final equation uh, substituting the suitable values in the differential equations. Now where this LP is defined as dL by dP upon Ix. or i x sorry del l delta a is defined as d l by d delta a upon i x and we will be taking 1 by l p minus 1 by l p as a star. Now substituting this value in this differential equation we will get finally delta p in time domain equals to minus delta s delta a upon l p 1 minus e to power minus t by tau into delta of delta a. So, solving for p at solving for the steady state of roll rate, we will get p steady state at t equals to infinity equals to minus L delta A upon L p into delta of delta A. As you know, steady state is at t equals to infinity, what will be the valuation it is known as steady state. Okay. Now since you know that we can write delta A L delta A as C L delta A Q S B by I x and L P as C L P 
b by 2 u not q s b divided by i x now substituting these two value in this equation we'll get p s s equals to minus c l delta a into q s b by i x c l p b by 2 u not q s b by i x into delta of delta a or p s s b by 2 u not equals to minus c l delta a by c l p into delta of delta a for this differential equation we have seen the steady state given by this particular equation now here we had to find the steady state for roll rate now suppose we measure the value of this roll rate from instrumentation for an aircraft which can be easily measured using red gyros suppose that if we measure these values so using the measured values if we know the geometric dimension of my aircraft i can easily get the value of cl delta a and cl delta p so this is a very good method of finding the derivatives of an aircraft using the measured value of steady state this technique of deriving the aerodynamic derivatives using the measured value is known as system identification based on the previous derivation let's see a numerical based on that steady state steady state value derived suppose that for an aircraft cl p is given by minus 0.285 radian inverse cl delta a equals to 0.039 radian thus area is given as 18 meter square value of b is given as 6.7 meters inertia is given about x axis as 4676 kg meter square step change of 5 degree that is aileron deflection of aileron deflection of 5 degree so using this value b by 2 u not that sorry u not is given as 87 meters per second d by 2 not equals to 6.7 by 2 into 87 equals to 0.039 second dynamic pressure q equals to half rho u not square equals to 4636 newton meters per meter square lp will be given as clp b by 2 u not q s b upon ix which is equal to minus 1.32 second inverse 
tau as you know it was minus 1 by lp so tau will be equal to 0.77 second l delta a will be equal to cl delta a qsp upon ix which is equal to 4.66 second in hour so steady state value of roll rate will be minus 4.66 into 5 degrees since the equation for steady state value of roll rate was given by pss equals to minus of delta a by lp into delta of delta a so steady state roll value of roll rate at steady state will be minus of 4.66 into 5 divided by minus 1.32 which will give me 17.8 degree per second so this is my roll rate steady uh, value of roll rate at steady state as i already told you if instead of calculating the steady state value of roll rate if we measure the value of this roll rate from rate gyros we will be easily able to derive the values of your aerodynamic coefficient clp cl delta a since this geometric values is easy to determine for an aircraft let's take another problem for a second degree equation or second second order derivative suppose for an aircraft the following data are given as cn beta equals to 0.071 per radian cn r equals to minus 0.125 per radian c n delta r equals to minus 0.072 per radian c n beta dot is taken to be 0 for velocity of 53.64 meters per second density at sea level is given by 1.2225 kg per meter cube area for aircraft is 17.09 meter square span 10.18 meters and inertia moment of inertia about z axis by 4786.04 kg meter square now you can do the calculation as the formula for this derivatives has already been told and you can find it in any book so i'm just writing the values which will come upon substituting these values in that equations are your dynamic pressure will be half rho v squared equals to 1762.315 kg per meter second square and beta will be 4.55 second square and r equals to minus 
plus second n delta r equals to minus 4.61 per second square. Now for pure rolling motion, the differential equation is given by psi double dot minus n r plus sorry minus n beta dot into delta of psi dot plus n beta delta of psi dot uh, delta of psi equals to n delta r into delta of delta r. Now, since we have already mentioned C n beta dot is 0, so this term will be 0. So, rewriting this differential equation, we will get and substituting the values for n beta, n r and n delta r, we will get differential equation as delta of psi double dot, this is delta. equals to minus 0 0.76 delta psi dot minus 4.55 delta psi minus 4.6 1 delta of delta r. Now, since psi dot delta psi dot can be written as delta r, so we will get delta r dot equals to minus 0 0.76 delta of r minus 4.55 delta psi minus 4.61 delta of delta r. Now, as you can see, using these two differential equations, we can form a state matrix of the differential equation represented by psi delta of psi dot and delta of r dot equals to zero one minus of four point five five minus zero point seven six into delta psi to delta r plus zero minus four point six one delta of delta r. So, this state matrix representation of differential equation is in the standard form of x dot equals to a x plus b u. Now, in such case, if you want to form the transfer function of this state matrix, we can use either Cramer rule or simply you can use a formula as this will be s of i x x taking taking laplace transform of this state matrix equation si minus a of x of s equals to b u so x of s will be si minus a inverse into b u of this is u of s u of s. So, from this transfer function we will get x of s by u of s equals to s i minus a inverse into b. So, you can find transfer function using this formula or using Cramer rule. We will be seeing uh, deriving the transfer function using both method. So, first using this
formula let us derive the transfer function s 0 0 s minus my matrix a which is 0 1 minus 4.55 minus 0 0.76 into x of s equals to v of u which is 0 minus 4.61 into delta r of s okay for the solving this s minus 1 4. Point 5 s plus 0 0.76 x of s equals to 0 minus 4.61 delta of delta r s. Here my x s is nothing but the matrix involving delta psi and delta r. Now, so my x s will be s minus 1 4.55 s plus 0 0.76 inverse into 0 minus 4. 0.6.6 now calculating inverse of 2 by 2 matrix is very simple which will be a joint of this matrix this was our a matrix divided by determinant of this matrix which comes to S plus 0 0.76 1 minus 4.55 and S and determinant is x square plus 0 0.76 S plus 4.55 this whole matrix multiplied by 0 and minus 4.1 will give me my value of x s. Now, this multiplication is very simple since first element is 0. So, you will get x of s as minus 4.61 by your value of determinant which is x square plus 0 0.76 s plus 4.55 and multiplying this row by this column we will get minus of 4.61 upon s square plus 0 0.76 s plus 4.55. Five into delta R of S. So, transfer function of this matrix will be since we know that X of S is nothing but but delta psi of S and delta R of S this whole with respect to delta r of s will be delta r of s divided by delta r of s equals to value of this matrix 6 1 by s square plus 0 0.76 s plus 4.55 and minus this is s minus 4.61 s upon 
s square plus 0.76s plus 4.55. So this is a transfer function for delta psi upon delta r. The transfer function is given by this equation. And for delta r upon delta uh, delta uh, delta r upon delta of delta r or radar reflection is given by this particular equation. Set of transfer functions you have derived using your si minus a inverse into b formula now let's see using cramer rule because why will be needing cramer rule because this is a 2 by 2 matrix so finding inverse is very easy but if you go for higher order equ differential equations or a matrix which is large say as 4 cross 4 or 5 cross 4 finding inverse is little bit tough so in that case cramer rule is very beneficial we know that si minus a x of s equals to b of u of s. This we got from substituting or finding characteristic equation. So now the value of si minus a was s minus 1. 4.55 and s plus 0 0.76 value of xs was delta psi s and delta r of s value of v was 0 and minus 4.61 u of s was delta of delta r of s so while deriving the transfer function using Cramer rule, delta psi of s by delta of delta r of s will be just substitute the value of b matrix in the first column if you want to derive the transfer fun function for delta psi of s. So it will be determinant of 0 minus 4.61 minus 1 s plus 0 0.76 by determinant of s 4.55 minus 1 s plus 0 0.76 this is determinant of si minus a and similarly for finding transfer function of delta r of s upon delta of delta r s you substitute the value of this column by the value of B matrix. So, delta R of S by delta of delta R of S will be determinant of the matrix 4.550 minus 4.6 divided by determinant of this matrix. Point seven six. To solve this equation, you will eventually get the same transfer function as derived from formula uh, derived from using formula SI minus A inverse of B. Okay. Now the problem related to pure yawing motion, the transfer function for psi s upon delta r s will be minus 4.6 by s square plus 0 0.76 s plus 4.55 and transfer function for r s upon delta r s will be minus 4.6 s upon s square plus 0 0.76 s plus 4.55 s. Now, when this transfer function uh, input step input signal will be applied, let me run this command and you can see the output for step input signal. So, these are the responses of transfer function for a unit step signal. Now, from the plot, as you can see, 
the steady state value for rs upon delta rs is zero let's see the characteristic of this transfer functions steady state and your settling time now the value of settling time for delta r upon delta r of s final value for delta psi upon delta r s is minus 1.01 .01. from final value theorem as you can see the value for transfer function delta psi upon delta r s will be minus 1.011 and for delta r upon delta r s will be zero now during our analysis we saw a first order equation a second order equation and what will be the response of that when subjected to a step input now i want to discuss what will be the response of a higher order system when it is subjected to a step input so in that case the concept of dominant pole comes into role so i'll be explaining what are dominant poles and how system responses to different input signals so for that let's take a system which is a second order system cascaded with a first order system so my second order system as you know the standard second order system is represented by omega n square by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s by omega n square this is my second order system now it's cascaded with a first order system which is 1 upon tau s plus 1 so or all this will be a third order system what will be the response when this is subjected to a unit step or impulse signal we were talking about dominant poles so let me explain what do you mean by a dominant pole in this equation as you know your poles will be minus zeta omega n plus minus j omega n root over 1 minus zeta square and for this case as you know it will be minus 1 by tau yes so minus 1 by tau as you know for in laplace domain for every root the real part of the root there is exponential term corresponding to that in time domain which results in decaying function or uh, increasing function that's why we go for real part to be negative because for each real term there will be exponential term in time domain so if my real part is negative my function will be a decaying function if my real part is positive my function will be a increasing function this is this will result to instability this is stable because at some finite amount of time this will finally reach a very small value or you can say a zero value so we were discussing about dominant poles so in this case in this scenario you can have different cases now first case b suppose this is a second order under damp system and this is dominant pole now what do you mean by dominant pole now as i already told you for each root in laplace domain there is a corresponding exponential term in time domain and if that is a, a root in a negative half of s plane you will be getting a decaying function as i explained in this e to power t so for this case as you know response will be due to decaying or uh, decaying response will be due to minus zeta of omega n and for this particular case your decaying function or decaying response will be due to minus 1 by zeta term so dominant means suppose value of my zeta omega n comes zeta omega n comes to be minus 
and the value of minus 1 by zeta comes say like a minus 1 or let let us take a larger value let us uh, let us uh, take that minus zeta omega n equals to minus of phi and this equals to minus of 1. So, corresponding to this term we will be getting function something e to power of minus 5 t plus second order so sine term something will come and corresponding to this, this value we will be getting e to power minus t. Now, since you can see the coefficient of this function is minus of 5 t. So, the function will decay rapidly. Suppose this function decays rapidly, say I take some random value say about uh, 3 seconds, this function reaches 0 and you can say the power of this particular function is 1 or minus 1 you can say. So, this function will be decreasing, but not as fast as compared to this function. So, suppose it will be decaying and after t equals to say about 20 seconds this function reaches 0. So, in my in this case my whole response depends on the root of first order function. Since for collective system your whole response should reach 0. So, because of the uh, value of this particular uh, value of this particular root my whole tran transient response will be 0 only when this particular response due to minus 1 is 0. So, I can say that my response of this particular system depends solely on the response of first order system. So, I call I will call this as a dominant pole. Let us see what will be different cases and what will be response of that system. Let us discuss case 1. This is my second order system is an under dam system with dam system with second order poles as dominant pole. Second order system dominant pole. Now, in this scenario, when this scenario is there, percentage overshoot will be less as compared to a purely second order system, your settling time will be less as compared to second order system, but your rise time will be more in when compared to a pure second order system. Now, second case case 2, when both first order pole and second order pole are dominant poles that is this is my um, Laplace domain, my first order pole correspond to some values say minus 1 by zeta, 1 by tau and your second order poles will be as you know it is there will be two conjugate poles. So, it lies some about about here. So, that is all coincide in the same uh, same particular line. Then in this case both first order and second order are dominant poles. The result in this case will be you will get a critically damped system which will be very similar to a second order system. The response will be similar to up to a second order critically damped system. Case 3, when first order pole is dominant pole. when this is a scenario your response will be similar to second order over dam system
we saw higher order system that is a cascaded system in which a second order system was cascaded with a first order system so we'll be seeing the response of that cascaded system to a step input signal let me take a first order transfer function as 3 upon s plus 3 and a second order transfer function as 9 upon s square plus s plus 9 now the case one which we discussed was the second order poles will be the dominant pole the response so response of this cascaded transfer function with respect to second order system is the response of this cascaded system to step input signal will be for ts1 for case 1 as you can see these are the responses of transfer function with respect to step input signal the first order will is represented by blue curve your second order pure second order system is represented by red and your cascaded system is represented by this orange curve now as per the properties of the cascaded system since the roots of the second order system are the dominant poles so the characteristic of this will be as discussed in the class the settling time will be less than the settling time of your pure second order system so your settling time for second order system is 7.64 seconds while for cascaded system it's 6.93 as you can see the settling time for cascaded system is less than the settling time of pure second order system and your percentage overshoot for the cascaded system will be less as compared to your second order system now this is the value of percentage overshoot for pure second order system you can see peak amplitude is 1.58 and for cascaded system the value of amplitude peak amplitude is 1.38 so percent percentage overshoot has decreased from 58.3 to 38.3 percentage Similarly, we told that for a cascaded system, your rise time will be greater than the rise time of pure second order system. The rise time for pure second order system is 0 0.395 seconds, whereas for cascaded system, it's 0 0.532. Now, as for case 2, we are both first order transfer function and your second order transfer function have dominant root in that case the transfer function i have taken as s upon s plus 3 while the second order transfer function is s square plus 6 s plus 9 the roots will be minus 3 for first order system and for second order system it will be minus 2 plus some complex part so in that case the response to the step input signal will be as described with these plots this is a step input which will be will be same since i have not changed the transfer function from case one now this is a pure second order system represented by red plot and your cascaded system represented by orange plot as i told you in the class the response for this curve will be close to or very similar to a critically damped system for a pure second order system as for the third case the transfer function which i have taken for first order system is same s upon s plus 3 while for second order system it's 9 upon s squared plus 7 s plus 9 so that makes my zeta greater than 1 
so in this case my dominant pole will be due to first order transfer function in that case my response to step input will be as follow by represented by this plot in this case the response of the cascaded system is similar to the response of an overdamped system due to your second order system so far we have discussed about uh, second order system first order system your cascaded system what will be the response of that when exposed to step input or impulse signal now as you have studied in previous lectures this is a longitudinal small perturbed equation of motion so what will be the transfer function of that so that will be derived using this is a differential equation take laplace transform and you arrange in matrix format and as you know to derive transfer function the best method will be using cramer's rule use cramer's rule to derive the transfer function for u of, of u of s upon delta e of s alpha of s upon delta e s and theta of s upon delta e of s you will be getting a transfer function of the format something numerator in terms of s divided by a denominator and as you saw in previous lecture the denominator was same but the numerator quantity differed from equation to equation so here also when transfer function will be derived the denominator is same while numerator will have different coefficients so this is a pretty long equation and i would like you to do it yourself because there might be some error while equating this lengthy equation but i have still tried to solve this equation this matrix and the coefficient this d of s or your denominator i got was of the fourth order and the coefficient for a b c are respectively given as mentioned on the blackboard this is a1 or a your b c d and e this is very big equation i would like to say that try to equate no need to memorize this big equation try to equate and see uh, because substituting this value uh, substituting the value for a general aircraft this will be much simpler matrix to solve similarly for the numerator part for u of a s upon delta e of s you will get a third order equation similarly for alpha of s you will get a third order equation theta of s you will get a second order equation i'll be posting this on the forum what will be the coefficients of a u a alpha a theta so no need to worry about that or no need to memorize this big equation so taking this equation of motion for longitudinal motion for a general aircraft for a general aircraft the following data if i take the value of a equals to 675.9 b as 1371 c equals to 5459 d equals to 86.03 and e equals to 44.78 the value of a to e if you take for a general aircraft the transfer function for each of this will come to be u of s upon delta e of s will be minus 6.312 s square plus 4927 s plus 4302 by 
6.31s plus 44.78 your alpha of s upon delta e of s will be minus 0 0.746 s cube minus 2.208.3 s square minus 2.665 s minus 1.39 divided by 675.94 plus 1371 s cube plus 5459s square plus 86.31s plus 44.78 and similarly my value of theta s upon delta e of s will be minus 208.1 square minus 136.9s minus 2.380 divided by the same denominator I won't be writing that okay as you have seen in previous section we derived transfer function for longitudinal perturbed equation of motion similarly we can derive transfer function for lateral direction equation of motion the set of equation or differential equation is given by this formulas. Now again you have to apply Laplace transform and write it in matrix form and as you know using Kramer rule you can derive transfer function for different variables of lateral directional equation of motion. Now I have not derived the full equation what I will do I will put that the full full transfer function on the forum and you can check. Now based on this transfer function and using a data for a, a aircraft, my transfer function for different variables will be given by this transfer functions, this equations, where since you know that uh, lateral directions are controlled by two deflection surfaces that is aileron and rudder. So, transfer functions related to ailerons are given by these particular set of equations while for rudder it is given by this particular set of equations. I would like you to practice more problems on transfer functions. Thank you.